Welcome back y'all. Today we have a boot that is sent to us. It was in pretty rough shape. It is by Saint Laurent and uh, the outsoles of these things had holes once again all the way through to the insole. So we had to rebuild the insole on top of that. So yeah, as you can see the gentleman, I believe he rides motorcycles or at least that's the way it came across in the letter he sent us. So lots of holes went completely through and yeah, we're just gonna to have to give them a complete rebuild. So, without further ado, let's head out to the shop and let's get these taken care of. Y'all ready for this? Look at this. Boom, plastic. This is constructed the way that most ladies heels are made. As you see, these are plastic, hollowed all the way down. Uh, and the only thing that would actually make it look like it's a stacked heel is they put this veneer on there. So some people have asked us in the past, how can you tell if it's a stacked heel? Well, if you look right here in the corner, you'll actually see where this piece of veneer and this piece of veneer actually meet. And over time, this is what happens. They just come and start peeling out. Here, you can see it even started to peel. And that's how you can tell it's fake. This is the other boot. Now this is the one that's gotten worn the most on the heel. He, he lost the top lift already, but he kept wearing. And so here's the problem with these fake blocks is it's just plastic and it's being worn down. All the, the veneer is just completely stripped away right here. So what happens is if you go to sand this, it just one, it starts to melt. And two, then you have to try to get it to stick to this and, and add layers and then, but then you're working with veneer and it's just, it's a pain and it's a cheap way of boots charging you a lot and saving them even more in the construction. So now these are nailed into this plastic base right here. And uh, I guess the good thing is they don't come off, but the bad news is it's hard to get them off. <laughs> They're not as fibrous as leather. So this one is a half welt. It's a um, glued on welt, blade construction, only goes to right here. And then this is just the sole that's been glued on, not stitched on. All right, so as you can see, there's holes all in these. The other one was even worse. Uh, because this is a Blake construction, it's a little harder to re uh, replace the insoles um, without, you gotta make sure that you don't lose the shape. And 
these have a lot of glue that are just holding these on. So we have to use a lot of this to try to loosen it up so we don't rip this, this leather because this leather is crucial. It's gonna be what's holding it onto the shoe. Now this is actually gonna be a two-piece constructed insole. And you can see right here, that straight line going across. Um, this is leather and this is like a particle board, hard particle board that's very common. Um, it actually looks like this and it's got the shank built into it. It's kind of a, almost like a big one piece unit. And so really we don't need to replace this back section, but we do need to remove it to, uh, to keep the shape. So we'll replace this. Now here's the current insides of these. The leather piece, this, is, it's really weird because it's actually just cut straight across. They just butt up against each other and sometimes they're tapered and then tapered so that they overlay. But what's actually holding them together inside is just the sock liner. It just, it goes over like that and that's what holds this part forward. Along with the, the glue and the, the upper coming around, but uh, there's no overlay between these two. All right, let's get this welt on here. I find it easier to uh, put it on the sole first and create this kind of a cup for the, sh the upper to sit down into. Sometimes we can't do that. Sometimes we actually have to put it back on the upper and do it the other way, so. All right, for you folks that haven't watched our channel before, what I'm doing now is just trenching out the, uh, the leather sole so that when we stitch it, they will sit down nice and neatly within this trench. And we have a, uh, an electric trencher too, too, and it does a good job, but sometimes we like to use this little handheld one just cause it, you know, it's old school and it always gives a nice, I think it gives a cleaner trench than the, uh, the electric one. All right, so we got everything over on the glue machine drying. While that is drying, if you wouldn't mind, go ahead and give us one of these and uh, subscribe to the channel, tell your friends, share the video, and hit that notification bell. The algorithm loves this stuff and it helps our channel to grow. Let's get back to it. So you remember these, these things right here? Yeah, they're good. Now we're doing these right here, real stack leather, the old fashioned way. So if we have a boot that's like a cowboy boot with a long shaft or even like a, a zip up Chelsea's, all those type, uh, it's a lot harder to get a hammer down to nail the nails into the heel. So uh, this was what this device is for. You actually can drop a nail down in there and then the plunger here, that becomes the hammer and it drives down the nail.
like that. Okay, y'all, so the last thing that we have to do is just go ahead and get these boots cleaned up before we return them to the customer. Now, these boots, again, are suede, and I know suede's one of those things that a lot of folks are worried about when it comes to caring for their suede boots or shoes. I'm gonna put a link to a video right here. Definitely check it out if you have questions on how to care for your suede. But I'm gonna go ahead and get these cleaned up, conditioned, protected, and I'll walk you again through the process as we go along. All right, the first thing you want to do is take a suede brush and just work it all over the suede, trying to get off as much surface dust as you can. Now you can see in some areas like this part here, he has just worn off the fuzzy nap portion of that suede, so there's nothing you can do about that. All right, now what we'll do, take a little suede shampoo, pour it into the water. And just kind of work it up into a lather. Now this bowl is pretty big. Unfortunately, I didn't have a little one here at the shop, so this will this will have to do. And then you just work that lather into the suede and clean off any of the uh, the dirt marks, the you know sweat stains, whatever is on there. And also guys, it's really important that you remember not to use saddle soap on suede. Um, that is not what this is. This again is suede shampoo. There's a big difference. If you use saddle soap, then you can potentially cause damage, uh, especially to really fine new bucks and suede leather. So again, only use products that are for suede. And then you're just gonna take a uh, cloth or rag and wipe off that excess soap and bubbles. And then we're just gonna set the boots aside and let them dry out. Okay, ladies and gents, so we have wrapped up this pair of boots, but just a quick reminder before we show you what we have done to them. Uh, if you want to find any of the products or anything else that we used in this video, check in the description down below. You can find our website, Potter and Sons, down there. Also, a big appreciation as always, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and share this video. It always helps the channel to grow. We really do appreciate it. Heath, what did we do? All right, so as you can see from the beginning, these things were in rough shape on the bottom. Um, on one of them, it actually had warped the side of the shoe because it had worn all the way down to the pavement and just kind of pressed it out on the side. So instead of being straight, it just kind of bubbled out. So when we put the new insole in there, it kind of took, a, it was, it, you didn't see it all, but it was some trial and error. We had to pull it back off, straighten it, pull it back off until we could get that thing where it wasn't as warped. Mm -hmm. uh, but we were able to get some new insoles in there. These were Blake stitched shoes, insole stitch, I mean insole stitch shoes. Um, put a new Blake stitch welt on and did some black sole uh, color, mm -hmm. uh, just like the originals were. Uh, we remember those heel blocks, plastic uh, for this price tag. Yeah. Yeah. Again, you, you find that a lot that. on designer you brands, do, guys. So be careful. You got to You got to do your research on them. Uh, we replaced that with full stacked leather and it just looks so much better and it's going to last him so much longer. Yep. So, JR Hills, JR Souls. Yeah. And as far as the uppers go, 
You know, like I said before, there are some spots that kind of shine out in the boot. Again, that is just where the nap has worn off on the suede. It will happen, you know, if for certain parts of your pants rub on the, the uh, nap over a long period of time, it just tends to wear it off. The hills are the, always where you usually get it. Yeah, you see it a lot. So that's what those spots were. So what did we do? Again, we just cleaned this suede with some sh suede shampoo. Then we uh, let, let it dry. We went behind it and sprayed it down with some conditioning spray that has black pigment in it that put a lot of the black coloration back into those boots. And then we went right behind it, sprayed it down with some weatherproofing spray. Again, guys, make sure you always keep your suede and new buck shoes coated in weatherproofing spray. I promise it will protect them for a long, long time. Yep. So that's about it. Man. That is. So anyways, again, guys, if you have any questions or whatever, let us know. Again, thanks so much for watching. And until next time, y'all have a good one.